yes, I feel that my underpowered laser could be considered less than adequate, but I don't feel people should judge me. In fact, I'm going to tell you the entire story. I'll let you decide whether or not the myth is true or false when it comes to laser engravers. The size matter? My story begins seven years ago. I was a woodworker and I was looking to do some laser engraving yeah. on some of my cutting boards. You're thinking of purchasing what? A laser to engrave wood and leather. Well, Slick, don't even think about getting a cheap one. Well, what should I look for? <laughs> Any laser engraver with less than 50 watts is underpowered. Useless. Underpowered. It's underpowered. Underpowered. I got a message back in December, and guess what? I am the most recent winner of the Laser Engraver Sweepstakes. Woo! And I want to thank each and every one of you for giving my channel so much support. Because the Big Stacks family was so kind enough to get this video so many views, I was offered to make a sponsorship video. And the product is the Adam Stack M5 Pro Laser Engraver. There's only one problem. It's only five and a half watts. Useless. Underpowered. So I figure, what the heck, let's give it a shot. Welcome to Big Stack Small Workshop. This video is sponsored by Adam Stack. I have some links in the description below that give you all the specs straight from Adam Stack's website. When it came in the next week, I unboxed it and started assembling it. It was actually very refreshing to find the box that everything I needed to assemble, including a 10 and 8 millimeter combination wrench. First thing was to assemble the frame, but it took a few minutes to get my bearings. I wanted to make sure the measurements on the actual rails were on the correct side once assembled. It wasn't too hard, and three of the corners had feet on them, while the third had a control box. After we got to this step, I set the frame on my stainless steel workbench, just to check that all the axes were squared. Then I installed the rolling section, which holds the laser and makes sure everything runs smoothly. Some rubber track went down, which provides a good friction surface to move the laser unit back and forth. After snipping it to length and tightening it down, everything appeared to run smoothly. In fact, the only thing which wasn't perfect was this little cap at the end of the frame. It really didn't bother me that it wasn't flush, as much as my neurotic nature was worried that one day it might get snagged on something and come off. I know I've completely forgotten about it, only to find it six months later. I'd wonder where it came from, and then toss it back into the black hole known as the spare parts bin. The laser module slid in place with an eccentric nut. I wasn't really sure what an eccentric nut was, so I looked all over the unit for one. Then I paused for a moment and figured it out. My shop has always had at least one eccentric nut in it. Tips. How to determine the tightness of eccentric nuts. What is an eccentric nut? Well, we got the laser engraver together now. But before we fire it up, do me a favor. If you're enjoying this content, please click on that like button so YouTube can share it with more makers just like you. Let's get back to the laser. I plugged in all the wires and got started. Here we go. Let's laser engrave something cool on one and a quarter inch Luan. To help with the smoke buildup, I always run a box fan at the end of the workbench, blowing out an open door of my shop. I was a bit disappointed. It was a fairly clean image, but the laser was only charring the surface of the wood. I tried doing another pass or two, but this just caused the wood to catch fire. 
Not my brightest of ideas. There must be some mistake. What I was supposed to get was a laser engraver. What I got was a laser charrer. Oh, this is a laser engraver. Okay. Did I change the settings on the laser engraver? No. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So apparently the software I downloaded called Laser Gerbil lets you change the setting on how you want the laser to cut into the surface. I looked up the settings for my material and then I changed them using the Laser Gerbil software. Laser Gerbil is this program that's open source laser engraving software. It's free to download and use, which is great because I'm a tremendous cheapskate. With my settings dialed in, things came out a lot nicer. If I figured this out correctly, the settings you adjust from the material to material are the power and speed of your laser. Really slow speeds are great for engraving and cutting. A high power laser setting gives you a bit of a darker image. And if you need to cut a shape into your image, you just switch to the vector setting in the laser gerbil software. So on the front of the instruction book for this laser engraver, there's a little QR code. You guys see that? This QR code gives you a bunch of PDF downloads regarding the Atom Stack M5 Pro. It also gives you a list of all the different materials you can engrave and the settings you're supposed to use on each one. There's so many different surfaces that you can engrave. I'm primarily going to stick to wood and leather. Now I did end up engraving slate, which came out great. But yeah, the laser had to move so slow when engraving slate. I was going to be here all night long. <laughs> that coaster would probably have taken eight hours to engrave the whole thing if I had just let it go. I was probably an hour into it and it's about 11 o'clock at night. I'm, I'm not feeling like staying up all night just to do the coaster. Uh, but it can do slate and it does look very nice. Uh, you just need to remember with slate and probably other stones, you need to have the time available to do it. I saw on other YouTube videos where you can use masking tape to reduce the smoke stain on your surface. This is me trying to engrave leather with some masking tape on it. It was okay, but I also needed some weights to hold down the leather so it laid flat and the laser could pass over it. The masking tape was great for wood and slate, but not really on the leather. Then I saw a fellow YouTuber who had his own method. You could get the weather fairly wet, not only to minimize smoke staining, but also to help it lay flat while engraving. This was a genius idea. Then, after the engraving was done, I just took a soft toothbrush and gently scraped the charred remains away for a beautiful engraving. I want to thank Adam Stack for sending me this very adequately powered laser. The finished projects turned out great. And because it's reasonably priced, you could definitely add this to your home workshop without breaking the bank. If you're interested in purchasing the Atomstack M50 Pro or just the Atomstack M50, there is a link down below. And also, Atomstack has been gracious enough to provide us with an Amazon coupon for 10% off. More details are down below in the description, plus a link to the Amazon product page. Did you get your question answered from the beginning of the video? When it comes to lasers, does wattage really matter? I don't know if it's the size of the wattage that matters. I think it matters more if you know how to use it. Mm. <coughs> if you have an idea for a Big Stacks video or a project you'd like to see me make, do me a favor. Drop me a note in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Remember, Big Stacks grows, Big Stacks builds, and Big Stacks makes. If you're interested in seeing a video where I debunk the worst leathercraft advice out on the interwebs, click on this video right here. YouTube will take you straight to it. And I'll see you next time at Big Stacks Small Workshop. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. And then the last line. Any laser engraver with less than 50 watts is underpowered.
underpowered. It's underpowered. <laughs> All right, one more.